ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله والسلام عليه اما بعد فان خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى رسول الله وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار and a number of occasions over the past few years for the khutbah al juma as well as the continuous lessons that are given here the seminars as well we've tried to make an attempt to bring to the understanding and the knowledge of the community the importance of the position of the companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa radiyallahu anhum ajma'in in the deen of allah azza wa jal it is an integral part of the identity of the regular muslim the aqeed of the muslim is defined and determined by how he looks at those companions all of them so different talks were given about different aspects of those companions we want to take one companion today and we just want to shed some light on what we need to understand concerning this personality who Allah azza wa jalla divinely chose to be from the ashab of the khatim of the anbiya and the mursalin صلوات الله والسلام عليه صلى الله عليه وسلم ورضي الله عنهم اجمعين ask my wife tell me what you know and think out of the box and be generous i don't care what it is but just tell me what do you know about muawiyah the companion muawiyah she thought about the question and she said muawiyah he was the one who had the problem with ali رضي الله عنهما i said give me some more She wasn't able to mention any more at that point. Many Muslims, they know that Muawiyah, this personality, they know that aspect about who he was. And unfortunately, that reality that he had a problem with Ali ibn Abi Talib, may Allah be pleased with both of them, because of that problem, some of us even have some foreign unacceptable ideas about Muawiyah. That some people who are people of the Sunnah, due to the fact that we live in close proximity geographically to Shiite people come from Lebanon from Beirut people who come from Pakistan Afghanistan people who come from where there is a large population of Shiite especially people of the Sunnah I'm talking about they have this thing in their hearts concerning Muawiyah that has crept into their belief in their hearts and their minds as a result of being close to those people The Nabi told us sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam inna al-mar ala din khalilihi falyanzur ahadukum liman yukhalil the person is going to be on the religion of his friend his companion so let each and every one of you pay attention to the person who you take as your companion so if you're living in an area where you're being surrounded in a village and you're growing up in that village around people who curse the companions It's not inconceivable for a person of the sunnah to call his son Fida Hussein, Ghulam Hussein. He's not against Abu Bakr and Uthman, he's not against them. But because of the effect and the impact of Shiite in his area, he has some ideas that are not acceptable concerning different aspects of Al-Islam. We have in our community in the city of Birmingham the Yarmi and the Khatam that comes as a result of Muslims being in close proximity to Hindus and to those people of Sikhism. And there are people of Islam who say la ilaha illallah. But as the Nabi told us sallallahu alaihi wasallam about the two distinct fires of Al-Islam and Kufr. He said the fire of the Muslim and the fire of the non-Muslim they do not coexist. If they're going to coexist, one of them is going to impact on the other. There's going to be some effect that they're going to have between themselves. So the Muslim has to be in a perpetual mindset of making jihad to push these issues away. Muawiyah radiyallahu anhu has a lot of virtues in Al-Islam, but some people as I mentioned, they criticize him. 
and they criticize him for a number of reasons one reason is because of his son because of his son Yazid and we're going to come to that inshallah ta'ala also for the new Muslim who comes into this religion they criticize him because of his mother her name is Hind bintu Utba most of us have seen the movie The Messenger or The Message in which it showed the mother of Muawiyah after the death of the Prophet's uncle in the movie Hamza she went and ate his liver like she was some mad animal out in the desert and there are narrations that mention that so they criticize Muawiyah they say look at his mother look at his mother so they criticize him because of his father because of his mother they criticize him because of his son and they also criticize him obviously because he had a problem with Ali Abi Talib although he used to say clearly to the community Ali radiallahu anhu is more superior than me Ali is better than I am because he was an individual who used to take the kalam of Allah and the kalam of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and make it big in his eyes and in his heart some of the people unfortunately people of the sunnah we're talking about we're not talking about the Shiites of Iran and Iraq we're not talking about those people the Nusayriya of Syria we're not talking about those people who most of them many of them outside of the fold of Al-Islam Wala Karama outside of the fold of Al-Islam the ulama outside of the fold of Islam we're talking about the Muslim who's on the sunnah he comes into the religion and he has something against Muawiyah because of the movie The Messenger there are some weak hadith all of them are weak that mentioned the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam talking bad about Muawiyah these hadith are in some of the books that we respect and we recognize Ibn Hisham he has a book of Sirah everybody reads that book in Arabic and much of it has been translated into English you are new Muslim and you're not on a minhaj in terms of getting knowledge is very easy to pick up the life of Muhammad by Haikal Muhammad ibn Haikal or any book and you're going to read some of these narrations that talk about Muawiyah the companion in a negative way as a Muslim you have to be aware there's one hadith in this dunya that is authentic and it's in Sahih Muslim in which it could be understood that maybe the Prophet says something bad about Muawiyah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or Radiallahu Anhu but we're going to come and take this auspicious day to address that issue hoping and praying to Allah Azza wa that He'll put it in our Mizan Yawmul Qiyamah of good deeds who was this man Muawiyah Abdullah little Muslim the little Muslim who is Muawiyah? You know Abu Bakr, you know Umar, you know Uthman, you know Ali, you know Bilal ibn Rabah, Aisha, Khadija. Who is Muawiyah? Ya Ummat al-Islam. Muawiyah's kunya was Abu Abdurrahman. Ya Rasan Abdurrahman. And like the vast majority of the companions of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you will barely be able to find a companion except that he has a kunya. Muawiyah took the sunnah the easy sunnah just calling yourself Abu whatever your eldest son is or even your eldest daughter and that was the minority with them may Allah be pleased with all of them he's Muawiyah the son of Abu Sufyan so his father was a companion his father's name was Sakhar ibn Harb and he was a serious personality in Al-Islam in Jahiliyyah and in Islam and the hadith of the Nabi applies to him when he says Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Khayrukum fil Jahiliyyah Khayrukum fil Islam Ida faqahu The best of you in Jahiliyyah or the best of you in Islam if you get comprehension His father Abu Sufyan was the man in Jahiliyyah Probably the way men are today many men would not deserve the right or be afforded the opportunity to have an audience with Abu Sufyan the way he was in his personality so he raised his boy Muawiyah up to be the leader of the people which he became from the virtues of Muawiyah is the fact that he embraced Al-Islam during the days of the Sulh of Al-Hudaybiyah when the people prevented the Nabi from making Umrah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he wanted to have some negotiations with Quraysh Muawiyah said he embraced Islam that time and that's important because it preceded the time when Mecca was conquered his father and the other chiefs of Quraysh accepted Islam after Mecca was conquered Muawiyah accepted Islam before that not at the very beginning he fought against the Muslims in the beginning in Badr and Uhud 
He fought against the Muslims. But on the day of the days of Al Hudaybiyah, he embraced Islam, and this man kept his Islam quiet. He was afraid of his father. He was afraid of the chiefs of Quraysh and what his Islam would do in terms of bringing down the honor of the father. So it goes to show nobody here has the power and the manliness and bravery of Muawiyah. But it may be that a person's situation necessitates and dictates that he hides his Islam. Like the man in the Quran with Musa and Fir'aun. It's possible. Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, obviously since he embraced Islam, he believed in the Nabi and he died in that Iman. So the most important characteristic and virtue of Muawiyah, he was a companion. Ummat al-Islam, I say again to you from this member on this day, no matter what a person does, no matter who he is and what he accomplishes in this dunya, he can't do enough. Whatever he does, the magnitude of that action, that ibadah, that sacrifice, can never and will never reach the level of what it was just to be a companion. That deed alone, he is a companion, that alone surpasses any and everything everyone else can do after the companions. We mentioned that so many times to you. Go to your grave understanding that as a Muslim, that the companions of the Prophet wasallam, no one can surpass them. One of the greatest scholars in Islam, bigger than Al-Imam Al-Bukhari, bigger than Al-Imam Muslim, his name is Abdullah ibn Al-Mubarak. He was a mirror mu'minin in hadith. He was an ulama, a scholar of al hadith. He was a rich man, he was a mujahid, he was a scholar. All of the characteristics of good akhlaq were embodied in this man. Someone asked him. The Khalifa, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz is from the Tabi'een and he put a lot of good for the Muslims in the Muslim empire. Someone said to Abdullah ibn Mubarak, is Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, is he better than Muawiyah? There was fitna during the time of Muawiyah, but Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, he is one of the descendants of Umar ibn al-Khattab and he did a lot of khayr. And Imam Ahmed considered Umar ibn Abdul Aziz to be from the Khurafa al-Rashidin, the fifth Khalifa that was rightly guided. Although Muawiyah was after during that time of Ali. So you want to know, is he better than Muawiyah? Abdullah ibn Mubarak, he said no from the aqidah of the people of the sunnah is that they believe that the dust that was accumulated in the nostrils of Muawiyah while he was with the Nabi is greater than Umar ibn Abdul Aziz and his whole life. The dust that came in his nose, the dust that came on his feet, the dust that was in the jilbab, the dust that got into the beard, the dust that got into their mouths, in their eyes, they took water and took the dust out of their eyes and they made wudu this better than Umar ibn Abdul Aziz and his whole life. Because that one is a companion and that one is from the tabi'een. And the Nabi told the people Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam The best people are the people that I was sent to Those companions of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam So he was a companion From the virtues of Muawiyah It's not that he was just a companion But he was one of those companions that were from Quraysh The Nabi had companions who were from Persia The Quraysh is better than the Persian in terms of his lineage Some of them were from Rome Some of them were from Ethiopia the Qurayshi is better than the, the one who's from any other place in terms of the lineage. So he surpassed some of the companions in that issue. That he was from Quraysh. From his virtues, radiallahu anhum ajma'een, is that he was one of the writers of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The scholars of Islam, they have ikhtilaf. Did he write down the Qur'an? Some said no. There are no clear authentic hadith that he wrote down the Qur'an, but there are clear authentic proofs that the Nabi would have Muawiyah to write down contracts. That someone would embrace Islam and he would tell Muawiyah, write down that this man gets this and this man gets that. So it goes to pro to show that he was intelligent, he was an educated person in an environment where education was frowned upon and in addition to that he was a mean, he was trustworthy. Whether he wrote the Quran or not, the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would never choose an individual to write letters to people who needed those letters, never would he choose an individual except that he was a person who was from the Umana, he was trustworthy or why else would the Nabi who was Hakim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam choose him? There were other people 
who can read and write from the munafiqeen. He never chose them. Not a single munafiq was one of the scribes of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it goes to show that the man was intelligent and the man was someone who was trustworthy in the eyes of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If he was good enough for the Nabi to write down the revelation or his letters, then he's good enough to be loved, honored, and respected. Held in high regard and esteem And not to have anything by the way of rancor, animosity or enmity In your mind or your heart against him If you do, on that point alone, something is wrong On that point alone He was a katib of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam From the virtues of Muawiyah, may Allah ta'ala be pleased with him Is that he narrated a lot of the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam You will be hard pressed to find 10 hadith in which Bilal narrated. You'll be hard pressed to find 20 hadith in which Salman al farisi narrated. Muawiyah radiallahu anhu narrated over a hundred of the hadith of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Again, that alone is a virtue. In this masjid right now, thousands of people that we have between us, all of us, we may not reach 100 hadith memorized. Although the Nabi said about his words, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, نَضَّرَ اللَّهُ مْرِيًا سَمِيَ مَقَالِتِ فَوَعَاهَا May Allah give light and illuminate the face of the individual who heard my statement and he understood it. He passed it off the way he heard it. Can you say that about yourself? Those books of hadith that the scholars used to write that called the Masani, the Musnad, they gather up the hadith of one particular companion. For an example, Al Imam Ahmed has a book called the Musnad in which he just brings the hadith of Aisha, irregardless of what the subject is. Bukhari's book is not like that. Bukhari is going to bring the hadith showing how to make wudu and the virtues of wudu. And he doesn't look at the narrator. He just wants to show you how to make wudu. But the Musnad is not like that. The Musnad is the book in which the scholar who put the book together, he brings all of the hadith of one companion and then the next companion and then the next companion. Al Imam Ahmed's Musnad, over 100 hadith for Muawiyah. That alone is a virtue. May Allah illuminate the face of the individual who says something or he heard my statements and he understood them, comprehended them, and he gave them to the people the way he heard it. Muawiyah did that. And as a result of that, many of the companions took from him as their students and many of the virtuous personalities from the Tabi'in took from Muawiyah as their sheikh. He's a virtuous person, a person of hadith from the virtues of Muawiyah. Muawiyah was a mujahid in the cause of Allah unparalleled. When you think about people like Umar and you think about people like Khalid ibn Walid, you think about people like his father Abu Sufyan, Muawiyah radiallahu anhu was on par with them in terms of his bravery, in terms of his intellect and being an administrator for the affairs of the Muslims. They used to say, like Ali said, it is as if Allah created Muawiyah for the sole purpose of administering the affairs of the Muslims. So as a result of that, during the khilaf of Umar radiallahu anhu, out of all of the people, Umar radiallahu anhu sent Muawiyah to Sham to be in charge of the people of Sham. All of those years, during the khilaf of Umar, 12, 13 years, the golden age of Al-Islam, Umar was pleased with him, he died. Uthman came and left him there. And then Uthman was subsequently killed and then the drama and the fitness started. So the point here is, the Nabi died and he was pleased with him. Abu Bakr died and he was pleased with him. Umar and Uthman chose him to be a leader of the Muslims to take care of their affairs. During the time of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ummat al-Islam, Muawiyah. He made jihad and he participated at the beginning against Islam. And then after becoming a Muslim, he participated in the Battle of Hunayn. The Battle of Hunayn, in actuality, seems to be a battle that went against the Muslims because they had a lot of people, more people than the Kuffar. And they were pleased with their numbers, but they didn't win the war. But as the Nabi says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, عَجِبًا لِأَمْرِ mu'min, وَلَا يَكُنُ ذَلِكَ إِلَّا لِمُؤْمِنٍ The affair of the believer is amazing, and that's only for the believer. If good or bad happens, it's going to be good for him. So although 
the outcome of the war wasn't like Badr nonetheless Muawiyah participated in jihad behind the Nabi how many people from amongst us made jihad how many people from amongst us had the opportunity to make what's easier than jihad easy things the easy sacrifices those smaller types of jihad how many people of us are falling at the wayside in regards to that that alone the battle of Hunayn is an indication of proof of the virtues of Muawiyah radiallahu anhu after the death of the Nabi a big fitna transpired there was a war called the war of Al Yamama Al Yamama was a war in which Musaylim Al Kazdab a man apostated some of the people from the Arabs apostated others from his tribe peninsula they supported him and he started fighting against the Muslims Abu Bakr and the rest of them the battle of Yamama and they knew how to fight in the war they decimated and killed over 80 of the people memorized the Quran as a result of that incident Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhu came up with the idea put the Quran together Muawiyah was in that war not only was he in that war but he did something that shows his virtues Muawiyah directly was responsible for doing away with Musaylim al kaddab he'll be raised up Yomul Qiyamah and he was the one who extinguished the light of Musaylim al kaddab meaning he killed the individual who brought that drama in his fitna Muawiyah radiallahu anhu the Mujahid who Allah Ta'ala mentioned about him and those companions and any and everyone else who makes the proper jihad but is applicable to the companions before anyone else إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَرْتَابُوا وَجَاهَدُوا بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَأَنفُسِهِمْ فِي سَبِيلِ لَا أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الصَّادِقُونَ That's Muawiyah in the Qur'an Any and every ayat of jihad That's Muawiyah in the Qur'an Those ayat of the Qur'an of jihad Many of them don't even apply to us In terms of application and doing it they all apply to Muawiyah Verily those people who are the real believers They're the ones who believe in Allah and His Messenger And they never had any doubt after their Iman And they make jihad in the cause of Allah With their monies and their persons Verily they are the truthful ones That's Muawiyah, may Allah be pleased with them Who did away with Musaylim al kaddab There was a lady, Ikhwani, a companion Her kunya was Umm Haram the Prophet went to her house and slept in her house with other men from her maharam. He woke up in the morning, he was smiling. Um Haram said, Ya Rasulullah, what makes you smile? He said, I saw in a dream, and the dream of the Prophet is the truth, that there will be a group of people from my ummah who will have war, and they're going to participate in the war, they'll be the first naval expedition in Al Islam. Jannah is wajib from them. The lady, the lady upon hearing that, she said, Ya Rasulullah, make dua to Allah that I'm from those people. He made dua that Um Haram would be from those people. Um Haram, radiallahu anha, traveled on the boat with the Muslims who went to Cyprus and they defeated those people. She came off of the boat on the horse. After she arrived on the land, the horse threw her over and she broke her neck and she died. The narrator of the hadith said, she was riding the horse of Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan. So he's a man of Jannah. He's in charge of that war. He was in charge of those army, those, those soldiers, and his son was in charge after him, Yazid. May Allah Ta'ala be pleased with Muawiyah radiallahu anhu and the rest of the companions of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam so the point here ikhwani Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan each and every one of the virtues that we mention are just a view in the long catalog of fadail of this man not permissible it's not allowed in the deen of Allah for a Muslim to have some neighbor some relative who's a Shiite and he's taking narrations that are not authentic Concerning his son Yazid The scholars have ikhtilaf about this man We hate Yazid for Allah Azawajal But we don't make takfir of Yazid And that's because he was from those soldiers Who will participate in that naval expedition So making the ta'veem of the kalam of Allah and his messenger The hadith said The people in that war will be in Jannah wajib Because of that hadith We're going to say Allah is responsible for what's going to happen to him but we have hatred for him why because Yazid killed over 600 companions 
over 600 companions and those that he didn't kill who he thought participated in making khuruj against him Al Hajjaj branded them with hot iron brands the way you brand a cow or a sheep or a camel they did that to Anas ibn Malik who had nothing to do with the fitna of al Hurrah. He had nothing to do with it. But they branded him on his hand to let the people know. We're not playing with you people. Over 600 of those companions. He had something to do with that. So we hate him for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's cause. But his ultimate final destination. That's with the knowledge of the Lord of all the worlds. As for his mother Hind bint Utbah. Ikhwani. Don't believe TV, don't believe the news. As Muslims, we have to weigh stuff up. Those things that they bring to us, someone said, why don't today you give the khutbah about those Asian Muslims? It's always, they identify Asian Muslims, black people, all the time, white people do that, the media. And this is not about racism, but they always do that. A Muslim does something, I did, Asian did this, Asian, Muslim did it, all the time. You can't see it's not fair, it's not just. We're not going to give a khutbah about something. We don't know the reality of it. If they did that, we free ourselves from the action of those people when we say unequivocally, unapologetically, that's not from our deen. That's not from our deen. But in regards to this issue, in regards to this issue, we don't believe as Muslims every narration that we hear or we read. There is no authentic narration in this dunya that him, the daughter of Uqbah, ate the liver of Hamza. Wallahi, my wife would not go to a dead body and take the dead person's liver out and eat it. She doesn't hurt anyone that much. And not only that, I won't let her do that. Do you think Abu Sufyan is going to allow his wife to show her disgust and hatred for Hamza radiallahu anhu to that degree? That's a Shiite narration. Those narrations are there, but they're not authentic. She never did it. And if she were to do it for the sake of argument, if she really did it, she did it in Jahiliyyah. And then Islam wipes away what went before it. So why are you accusing someone of something that they did in Jahiliyyah? Many companions did things in Jahiliyyah and Allah forgave them. But she didn't do it. May Allah be pleased with her. There is something that is authentic though, Ikhwani. And I hope that you pay attention to this. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wanted Muawiyah to write something for him. He sent his messenger to go to Muawiyah to tell him, Come, the Nabi wants you. When the messenger came to Muawiyah, Rasulullah wants you to come to write something. Muawiyah was eating. He said, You go back and you tell Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that I'm eating. You can't do that. You can't do that. You have to answer the call of Allah and his messenger. If he said, go in the corner, stand on your head, don't ask why, just do it. If he said, wear the hijab, don't ask why, just do it. If he said that the Salat al is two rakats, like, don't ask why, just do it. Muawiyah said, go tell him I'm eating, find someone else. The messenger went and told the Nabi what happened. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made a dua against Muawiyah. He said, la ashba'allah batnahu. May Allah not cause his stomach to be full. That's an authentic hadith in Sahih Muslim. So the people take that hadith and say that you Muslims, you respect Sahih Muslim. This hadith is there. How do you understand it? The way we understand that authentic hadith is not one way, but multiple ways. There are makharij for the hadith. Multiple ways to understand it. The Arabs used to say things that they didn't really mean. And the Nabi used to say that things that they really didn't mean. Mu'adh would ask him a question The Nabi would say to Mu'adh May your mother lose you ya Mu'adh He didn't mean May your mother get killed May you get killed May your mother lose you Literally He didn't mean it like that It's kalam that the Arabs would say So that the person who hear it Will know he's not pleased with the question Or that question is inappropriate The Nabi used to say Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ragham anf Abi Dhar Despite the nose of Abu Dhar Despite the nose Tarabat yadak May your hands be disheveled and put in the dirt He didn't mean that That's the way the Arabs used to articulate themselves May Allah not cause his stomach to be full Is one in, an understanding Another understanding Ikhwani, is just as important Just as important Is that There was a little girl who was an orphan Staying with Umm Sulaim Umm Sulaim used to take care of the little girl The Nabi saw the little girl said I haven't seen you in a long time Where have you been? 
I've been around Ya Rasulullah. The Prophet said and made a dua against the little girl. He said, La kabara sinnuka. May you not become old. When the little girl heard that, she became disturbed. She went to Umm Sulaim crying. Rasulullah made dua against me that Allah doesn't cause me to grow up and become an older person. Umm Sulaim put her clothes on and went to the Nabi and said, Ya Rasulullah, why did you do that to my Yatima? Why did you do that? The Prophet started laughing. He said, Umm Sulaim, don't you know? Don't you know that I made a condition with my Lord that any Muslim that I make dua against them and they don't deserve it, then I asked Allah to make it an ajr, a thawab, a barakah, a qurba with Allah if he doesn't deserve it. So an Imam Muslim, he brought the hadith of the little girl. And then after the hadith of the little girl, he brought the hadith of Muawiyah. May Allah not fill up his stomach showing that's what he understood. As a matter of fact, one of the ulama of al-hadith, al-imam ibn al-sakir, he said, that hadith, May Allah not cause his stomach to become full is the most authentic hadith concerning Muawiyah's virtues. From the dua of the Nabi for Muawiyah, he used to say, Allahumma ihdi bihi. Oh Allah, make Muawiyah someone who people are guided by. Why don't they take that authentic hadith? They want to take one hadith that's authentic and take it out of context and leave the one that's authentic and just reject it outright. And that's not from the justice of Al-Islam. So that hadith shows that Muawiyah radiallahu anhu, khwani, he was guided and he was one of those people who was a guider. He was hadi muhtadi. He was a guider and he was guided aright. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy and be pleased with all of the companions of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may he make us similar to the lowest one from amongst them. And may he not make it haram for us to be with them in the Jannah, Yawm Qiyamah. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillahi amma ba'd. Khwani fillahi. The aqidah of al-Islam is the most important aspect of the existence of any Muslim. We have a job, we have a responsibility to make sure that our Islam is clear and distinct and not mumbled, jumbled and mixed up with the shawaib of a shirk and bid'ah. Never have in your heart anything against the companions of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for verily that is a sign of a person's imminent destruction. You ask the Jews and the Christians who are the most beloved people to you, they are going to tell you the people with their respective prophets, the disciples of Jesus and those 70 people went with Musa when he went to the mountain top. You ask the Shiite of the Nusayriya, the Alawiya of Syria, Iraq, Pakistan, Afghanistan. You ask them who are the worst people to this ummah, they'll tell us the companions, Muawiyah, and people like Muawiyah. No. The companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they are the examples for us and they what we should they are what we should strive to be upon and to be like in our aqidah, in our ibadat, and the way we deal and have our mu'amalat with each other and in the surrounding environment that we find ourselves in. So we make dua to Allah Azza wa to be pleased with us as he is pleased with those companions and that he helps us to understand this religion and to apply it the way that they applied it for verily if that were to happen then the Muslims would definitely be idhnillahi ta'ala because of the promise of Allah they would definitely regain their former place of supremacy in the earth get away from the way of the companions in our ibadah, in our aqid, in our mu'amalat in the way we deal with this dunya then there, there's a price to pay for that and we're suffering from that right now this is what we're suffering from right now. May Allah Azza wa Jal have mercy upon all of us, establish us upon the Kitab and the Sunnah. Aqim al-Salah. Yarhamakumullah.